meeting 6.30, and we have a quorum. I'll call a meeting of the Conservation Commission for March 1st open. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes on <coughs> February 15th. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Um, we have a new public hearing for a abbreviated notice of resource area delineation which I will read into the record. Under the Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40 of Mass General Law is amended. The West Bridgewater and the West Bridgewater Wetland Protection Bylaw Rules and Regulations, the Conservation Commission, West Bridgewater will hold a public hearing, both remote and in person, on March 1st, 6.30 p.m. in the McDonald Brown Conference Room, 65 North Main Street, for a abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by James Beaton, who is seeking to confirm the resource area boundaries at West Street Rear, Map 36, Lot 33. And we're open. And do we have somebody presenting for that one, John? Yes. Mr. Chairman, my name is Scott Goddard, wetland scientist from Goddard Consulting. Um, tonight with me also is Brian Dunn, who's civil and survey for the, for the project. I see on the on the call Andrew Tebolt from my office is on there as well, and Kyle Raynor and James Beaton are here on behalf of the applicant. In fact, they are, they are, they are the applicant. So you have the whole the whole gang. <laughs> um, Mr. Delano, do you have a site plan that you're able to share? I know both um, Mr. Dunn and Mr. Tebolt sent you some color graphics just in the last hour or so to to um, use for presentation purposes, so that might be helpful. Um, so whatever you can find would, would be good and perhaps share. Um, so we're here basically seeking an ORAD, or an order of resource area delineation for a fairly large parcel made up of several assessor map parcels. The, um, the lot, albeit is very large, um, we're only seeking the approval from the commission on a portion of the site. Now uh, this is a very good representation, so the map I can put your attention to on the screen there. The, it's referred to as um, what, Old West, West Road Rear, is that what we're calling it, Brian? Yes, yeah, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Brian Dunn with MBL Land Development and Permitting. Um, as you can see to the bottom of the page, John, can I use your pointer? Will it work? It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't work. I don't know what happened. So, so to the bottom of the page, is where uh, Route 24 is, and then we have the curvature of West Street, and then uh, the first curve, and then the second, the, the next curve in is Old West Street. And if you remember, uh, I think this was uh, uh, Mr. Speedy's property for some some time, um, and he built, uh, as you can see, um, in the darker area on the plan that hatched the, the solar. So, solar panels. Uh, all those at home, can you see that screen with the map on Hatched it? Hatched area is the solar panels. That's Hello? manly, way down okay. the end. Yes. All right, go ahead. Okay, right. thanks, John. So we, we've got the solar panels shown on the plan, <coughs> and then the street that Mr. Spadia built some point, in, yeah, point in time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Little red one in the middle. Okay. So this, this would be Route 24. This would be uh, West Street and Old West Street. So this is the Old West Street. This is West Street. This is the overpass right here. This is the road that I'm talking about that Mr. Spadia built. And then this is the solar panel uh, area, uh, solar panel farm. Um, and then part of this road is paved. There's catch basins and there's drainage infrastructure. Look at that. Yours works well, too, I huh? finally got it. That. <laughs> and then, um, you know, for all of your um, history buffs, this is the old railroad bed right here uh, that's uh, been abandoned. So they have no more rights to this. It's only it's only there. Unfor uh, uh, unlike some of the other ones that the MBTA is up upgrading, uh, they have perpetual rights. But here, this roadway uh, railroad uh, bed here that went all the way to the past uh, through the the old Azax farm. Um, uh, parallel to Route 106, and I think further down in this area, uh, past the old Azax Farm, there's still some uh, abutments of the bridges that used to be there um, before as a Cohesive Brook that went over Cohesive Brook. 
but that's that railroad bed that that I'm talking about that's still it's elevated you can see it on the plan and um, and on the other plans and as well as if you did a sidewalk you would see that elevated railroad now what uh, Scott was talking about is this line here so we're asking for the wetlands in this area here to be approved but not necessarily these ones in the back at this time and that's consistent with a zoning line change so the the bottom part of that site plan or in this case it's the western side is zoned for industrial usage the eastern side or the up part of that plan because north is facing you know to the left um, is zoned as residential so just because of the cost associated with doing a review of this size we did flag the wetlands back up in there but we're not including that as part of our ANRAD request at this time is that being it's changed or is it residential right now? It's residential now. So and that's the way it's going to stay? Yeah, as far as, as far as we're aware. Yeah, we're not aware of any zone change at all. No, okay. there. So the, like what Scott was talking about, um, the wetlands that we've got here, um, you know, some of, the, some, of these, uh, some of these wetlands are BVW, some of them are isolated. Um, we've shown them as labeled as such on the plans. Uh, it's a strange little area, you know. It's a, it's, it was a, it was a, it took a lot of work out there. It's very yeah. thick. Okay, it's overgrown, and it's all been the area has been scraped and mined over the years. So everything to the lower side of that bike, uh, you know, railroad track, whatever, right? The to the to the so west. You can see more of it now. Is all very flat. It's b clearly been scraped. The topsoil is missing. The subsoil is missing. So you, you more or less have a, a newly developed, you know, topsoil on top of the original sea throughout most of it. And so when it got scraped down some years ago, you know, to be presumably developed for, I think it was previously slated for some kind of industrial development, they just brought in with the blade to plus or minus the groundwater table. So what, what, what it resulted in is, you end up if I talk, can I grab your little yeah, yep. go. Oh, okay, right. It's got the, the red button then. What you resulted with is you end up with these little pockets in here of isolated features that don't connect to anything else. But what you do have is a pretty large BVW network all through here. This all connects through channels here, little channels through here. So that's a big BVW network connects across here. This is one huge BVW here, all up against 24, all connected all the way up into here even. So, and then this is a big BVW system as well. But every, uh, and it's more natural once you get to the eastern side of the, of the railroad bed. But from the railroad bed down, this whole thing right here, it's been, the land's been worked over, you know, multiple times over the years. And you'll see that when you, when you take the walk, if John, if you take the walk out there, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But I think you're all familiar with this property to a point because this came before you with the notice of intent submittal. So there was at least a partial delineation in the proximity of the pale. How long yep. ago was that? Do you know? I think it was around 2015. So this could be quite a bit of stuff changed between then and now. I'm trying to picture exactly where it is. <laughs> so if you head out West Street towards, like you were going over to Manly Street, and be just before you go over the overpass of 24, it's off to your right. Before, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. not on the other, not on the. Is it on the not Manly side is over? Right? Manly side is over the over the overpass. We're back. So this would be right side. before the overpass. Okay. It's like a little road. I'm never down there, so. Oh. You know what Sprungetti's house is? Uh, the father's, you know, Sprungetti, the father's house. Yes. For the goats. That's old. That's yeah. old, old West, West Street. Street. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, the, I mean, basically, we're seeking confirmation of what is and isn't jurisdictional, um, the accuracy of the boundaries as shown, and seeking the issuance of an ORAD. So, you know, uh, at this point, we just need to schedule how that's going to take place, and you know, kind of start moving the process forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Not curious comments. To see what's going in <laughs> there. Right, um, <laughs> there was a sizable delineation fee. Uh, submitted for this and typically if let's say it's not um, eligible for a delineation fee we would hire out a uh, 53 G 
wetland scientists to go out and review it because uh, somebody's got to pay for a person to go out there. Mm -hmm. They put in such a sizable um, delineation fee that uh, I don't think it's fair to make them hire a 53G and spend some more money. Uh, so I'm going to do the uh, whole whole thing. Obviously, there's snow on the ground, so we've got to wait until till the snow's off the ground to get mm -hmm. the most accurate. Mm -hmm. I have uh, the snowshoes ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can use wi winter botany, but um, I think this type of um, low flat area that's been worked in the past needs to be looked at uh, with what's on the ground and not covered up with snow. So that's one thing. Uh, Where's the low flat area again? This. Everything pretty much from so this is from the railroad. From this bed. this yeah. is the railroad. Yeah. Everything are those down. Real wetland pockets, or are they <coughs> sort of man-made things? They're, they're man-made from excavation activities, scraping the soil down, that kind of thing. And so it's just kind of grown up. With so they wouldn't necessarily qualify as a. They they will because it was so long ago and it was not part of a stormwater management system. Gotcha. Well, I don't that think they're going to qualify as BBW and regulated. That's what I mean. Yeah. I think they're going to be non-jurisdictional features. You're talking about these here? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's we have a bylaw. Yeah, that's our bylaw. So okay. it may not be jurisdictional for the uh, DEP, right. but under the town's bylaw, it is jurisdictional. Well, let, let's, let's review that together because, uh, you know, to just. To well, we'll we can get into it yeah. at another yeah. meeting. I don't think yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. necessary to talk about we don't tonight. Have, we don't have to get to the minutiae here. So. Um, I did send Brian a email with a list of uh, or indications of where there were flags missing from the mapping, and we need to have that. We'll get it. We'll get it on a set of plans for you. Absolutely. All right. Not <coughs> a problem. And then um, we need to have the accurate name of the owner of the property, which means I need a current deed of the property, not just some past deed or you know something that refers to the property but the current owner okay and it's not what you have on the application so it has to be uh, the legal entity that owns it currently now um, and then I also spoke with um, the applicant himself uh, today and have requested that we get the name of what entity this application is going to be uh, submitted to or prepared for, and he's going to do that. So there's a few. And you spoke to James. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, so that's going to be straightened out, and um, that's about all I've got at this point. It just will tell the commission that these with the purple around them. It's kind of hard to see with the with the lightness of the room mm -hmm. here, but there's purple here, purple here, purple, 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 purple purple, a potential vertical pool there, some purple out here. Um, are you asking for this to be delineated? So it's it was delineated in the field, it's, it's off site, but it would project a buffer zone on site. So we probably ought to include that, yeah. So we would need that owner <coughs> to be party to this application. Then in that case, we don't need to do it. <laughs> That's a quick answer. <coughs> but that, would that affect anything with that property, though, going in and out of there? Well, as long as they didn't encroach. That's the thing. Uh, onto, see, there's an old layout here. I'm not sure what the legal status of the layout is because the county came in and reloc and maybe the state relocated this section here. But the old West Street used to go over here and then down here and across. And so there's a piece of land in the middle here owned by Terry Edwards. That's correct. And um, and he's not party to this application, so uh, we'll have to look into that as well. So again, it's nothing to take up the time tonight, but uh, there's some questions on that. Who, now, who owns the soil field? Uh, there's a lease on that so with Solventerra, I believe, or something similar. So whoever owns that property right there is, a, is still yeah. owner of that. Right, they own the the feet or the land underneath the mm. the uh, solar panels. Uh, I'm sure that's something that the owner and the applicant, if they were to pursue 
uh, some additional um, development of this site that probably w work around those things uh, in in some fashion. But it's clear it's in the in the record, so uh, they're aware of that. Uh, there is a conservation easement, or I'm sorry, a, uh, an access easement for the benefit of the town residents to come down this road and up into the land up here. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I am not aware of that access easement. Yeah, comes off of Old West Street, down along the existing pavement of um, the road, whatever it is there. It's, okay. not, it's not Old West Street, but it's... Uh, We'll call it the Spadia Drive. Yeah. <laughs> and <coughs> it goes down to the cul-de-sac and then right up Dog Lake goes right up into the town-owned property here. Okay. Do you have information on that? Access yeah. easement, John? Yeah, I could give you the book and page of it. Perfect. Thank you. And um, mm -hmm. I do have a lot of work, so I'm only going to be able to do a little bit of this every week. So I'm not going to be able to to uh, just jump on and spend a whole day out there. I don't know how long it took your people to do it. Um, it was a lot of man hours. I know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I, I don't have to do it to the detail that they did it. You know, I can walk along the line and say, no, I don't like that flag, or yeah, that's good, and just keep walking. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I just can't get out of the office for that length of time, so it'll have to be split up in my work week. So I'm recommending that we continue it for one month. Providing Mother Nature cooperates. Right. So I think that's the 5th of April, is that? Before we fully pick that date. Are you ladies here for this? I guess so. Yeah. We live on Crescent Street. 5th of April. We got a letter. I was going to ask if anybody had any other questions, yeah. comments, <laughs> or concerns. Yeah. I used to hike the railroad bed when I was a kid and play out there all this time. <laughs> but I don't know, I can't tell where Crescent Street is on there. Is at the top or like... So, you know, Crescent Street can would be way to the east, east. Yeah, yeah, way east. to the top. Yeah. You're on the other side. So I don't know why we're here, but... Yeah, because of the, uh, the abutted notification yeah. Yeah. from the, the east side of the property. Okay. Yeah, anybody who lands within a hundred feet of that green property boundary okay. would have received a letter. Okay. So, All right. so that's probably why you got it. So you're on Crescent Street? Yeah. 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 Grew up there. So whatever the project is that they're gonna eventually plan would be lower like below basically below the West Street hashed mark area. Yeah. So do you know Lois? Yes. I think that's her land there and that's the uh With contractors. The right we live right oh. next to Lois. Well, she's like kind of back, right to the. Lois is behind us. So that contractor's monstrosity where Cape Door used to be Correct. is right oh. there. That they own that. It's oh, not. Okay. It's not there, he's, but he's, the real he's done what he said he did, and it looks a lot better than it did before. <laughs> so we're on the other side of Lois. There's the Rosses, and then my. So parents. you're up in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then. Um, then the Ross lives next door to me. And I'm on the other side of my mom. Yeah. And the fact that the area around the solar farms was more recently delineated should help speed John's process up a little bit. I would so this area in here is where their stormwater, somewhat stormwater yep. basin is located. Um, I remember when they came in, we were going to put that in, and we were like, yeah, this they're this pushing it to the limit on everything in there, and that's... There's two kind of quasi stormwater features that are out there. Oh, my, little, my little pointer died here. <laughs> I gave you back to the broken pointer. Anyway, that that one? Sure. Yeah, so there's, there is right in here a stormwater feature. The, w the water is collected, and you, you'll see the riprap where it con contains it. And then there's another feature right in here. It's interior to it. So those are present out there. But yeah, we'll, we agree to a continuation for one month. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be the 5th, yep. April 5th. I'll entertain a motion to continue to the April, uh, yeah, April 5th. I'll make that motion. Second out. Second all in favor? Aye. So, so if you want to keep in contact with me, I can keep you up to date on what we're doing. Okay. And um, sure. they, you, won't, you won't get another notice. Okay. So this is your notice for the next one. Gotcha.
Right. And you're welcome to come. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Really? And hopefully, gentlemen, it'll uh, warm up over the next week. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Open yeah. things up. And then, little. John, if you if you have got questions when you're out there and you want us to come out with the GPS or whatever to help uh, locate things. Or yeah, if there's points of conversation you want to have with me, just give me a call. We can yeah. look at things, that kind of thing. So most of the time what I do is um, mm -hmm. say you have your flag number 33, and um, I think it should be 15 feet west of where it is. To me, that's good enough to tell you move your point west 15 feet, unless it's something you, you want to argue about. Right. And then we would go out and talk about no, it. But I, I, I don't... I don't expect you to go back out with the GPS and locate the flag. I can give you enough um, measurements to tell you which direction to go, 90 degrees to the line of X, Y, Z, you know, that kind of thing. Gotcha. So to make it easier on you, um, not that we necessarily uh, are helping you, but it just it makes sense to... What I was also that. saying is if the surveyors come out with you, they can help you, you know, understand where you are, because you might get lost out there. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be a surveyor. Right, I understand. So I think I All right, okay. Well. I just want to facilitate helpfulness. Yep. 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 I don't think you get, I mean, you got you got the railroad bed, you got the main, cut the, the road in the middle with the solar field. Those two things are pretty darn helpful. You got Route 24. Yeah. You're not going to get that lost. Now that you get the plans with them. And, all and the I've been numbers. out there before, yeah. you know, with the other projects. Okay, so. yeah, I think you'll be all right. Yeah. Having the railroad bed helps a lot. It gives you good oh, reference point. Yeah. <laughs> it, and it's a really good way of just navigating around in there, for sure. Okay, thank you all. All right. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Yeah. See you Have again. Have a good night. No continued public hearings. <laughs> uh, so what do they want to build there eventually? We don't know. Oh, you don't know. Yeah, we're just <laughs> saying that these are <laughs> the wetlands and saying that we'll agree to that and then they yeah, can sure. design a plan. I can't imagine what will go there with all the... Uh, uh, I don't think much. it is within that higher area that's within 100 feet of us. They will be working oh, yeah. eventually. Uh, Oh, well, no, maybe I, I can call that thing back up so I can show you a little well, bit. Well, yeah, you don't know. With the town's bylaw of the 50-foot no-touch around any of the wetlands, even if it's an isolated pocket, it's still under the town's jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It may not be something DEP's really worried about because it's small enough area, but they've got enough smaller pockets in there when you add them all up. Yeah. It's a sizable amount of wetlands to have to deal with. It gives us yeah. a little leverage over yeah, you go yeah, 50 yeah, feet good. from any of that, there's so much. Right, and, and then <laughs> it ends up being that they have to find either an area to replicate or justify that why they want to be able to fill it in or move it somewhere. Yeah. There's just so many... Is that a brook? Lots of water. Doesn't look like much to be done, but... So you're up in here. I have my own wetland in the back of my house. I bet you do. So, uh, so I'm interested where water goes, believe me. Lois's land goes right behind our house, like... So this this is your area up in here, yeah. Let's say, and they're not asking us to approve anything beyond this this way okay. of that line. So okay. it's way way away from here. It's all wetland anyway, so they, they didn't want to spend the money. Our backyard's all wet. <laughs> you want to go skating? Wet. I'm skating. Thank you. All right. Cool. 373 Crescent Street. Do we have anything in on that one yet, or are we continue? Uh, that's got to be continued. We haven't received uh, all the information. information. Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to continue 373. Motion to continue. Second that. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, we have 21 Lincoln Street. The notice of intent for the in general stormwater management permit. We have documents that were sent for draft review. Uh, Do you want to, um, since we have... Table that for now? Yeah, people from Old Bridgewater Place, Place. and 5 Manley Street. Yep. So we will move on to Old Bridgewater Place Apartments, 40B. Well, yes. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Walter Hermano, here tonight representing Mr. Adams. Bill Adams uh, is looking for a three-year extension uh, on his permit for his project. Uh, he wanted to let everyone know that 
He's been set back terribly by COVID, as everyone probably has as well. But uh, he was actually at one point very, very ill and hospitalized. Uh, it's a very large project. Uh, he is moving forward with it, uh, but he's had some setbacks over the past two years for COVID. And he's requested a three year extension. Is that a normal? Uh Uh, two or three is normal. So, yeah. John, do you have a feeling or a recommendation? Well, I don't think they've done anything. So, you know, if they were to start right now, um, it could probably take them three years to get yeah. the thing built. Yeah. Um, so, if you only gave them a year or two, yeah, they could always come back after the two. So it's up yeah. to the commission. So you usually don't do three. Yeah. Unless there's an extenuating well, circumstance. I understand, yeah. We've had extenuating circumstances here. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm comfortable with two. I could go for three. It's up to I one. go for two and then come back if you need three. That's me. See where it is. How long has it been since you've been back? Or well, since he came? Oh, almost three years now. It was so issued. Um, I found up on that pretty close. April 16th, uh, tw 20. 19. I think there's a so they just keep tolling, tolling you know, period you know, automatic. Yeah. It's almost two years from the state of emergency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there, there is, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, he, he has done some work in the <coughs> I put together a septic plan for him, which is a very, very large system for that mm -hmm. property. Uh, so he has done some work, and I know that he's talked to uh, potential developers or buyers. I don't want to claim I know all his business, but uh, he has been active on it. He's just had a few setbacks, health-wise. What do you feel? I'd go for three, but... I think we should stay with what we usually do. Any other commissioners have comments or thoughts? Prefer a two or a three? I I mean, it is a huge project, but so I think it's going to take them all of three years to... Th this is an apartment. Yeah. Block here, an apartment block here. They're three stories each, nine apartments on each floor, uh, 54 total units with all the parking and all the road work networks and things. Um, so, like I said, if they were to start today, next month, yeah. they'd be, they'd be, they'd be probably back asking to, to for another extension. At that time, you'd probably say just a year because they would be probably uh, nearing the completion of it. But um, so it's it's a big project. That's weird. New phone. Um, I would know that it's probably going to be at least. A it's them. <laughs> it's not even us. It's that speaker. Um, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, I'd almost say go two and then have them come back for two, figuring it's going to be at least three plus then if another year. Then yeah, if you got to add another, say, a couple more years to it, at least we're doing the same thing that we did now. Add two, add two. Instead of going for three Instead and then having one, to add, add another one. one or two. Either keep way, it's keep going to get keep extended. Like right. do. Either but way, it's probably going to have to be extended again anyway. So I think so. Keep it the way that we usually do things. That's consistent with the two. That's what I say. But it's up to you guys, too. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Oh. And making a motion for two I'll years? Make a motion for two years and come back for you need another one. Two. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second for a two year extension. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. All passed for a two year extension. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes. Good night. Five Manly Street. Five Manly. We have a informal discussion. Do you need to present? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Conservation Commission. Uh, my name is Dave Mackwell. I'm with Kelly Engineering Group. This is my uh, first physical public hearing in two years. <laughs> wow. Welcome back. We're privileged. I thought that um, maybe I would break out the boards and and, and uh, pin some stuff up here. It looks like I should have sent PDFs as well. I apologize for not doing that. So we're here tonight um, with Josh Berman 
of um, uh, Marcus Parkers and I think Brandon Fritz is on the uh, meeting as well online with Marcus Partners. So Marcus Partners have been looking at a project that the Commission approved um, in 2017 for a property located at 5 Manly Street. I don't know if all of the commissioners were here at the time. I see how we were all here. Yep. So I wanted to just make sure that we knew where it was. I printed one aerial photo that, of course, it looks so much better on the PDF on the screen. Yep. And then I printed it out and I had to highlight it all. So 5 Manly, right off Route 24, 106. 5 Manly starts here and kind of loops around the town's water well is right here in the middle. And, um, and that's the, uh, the river. So the project is very simple. You know, the project that was approved in uh, 2017 is a building that's about 78, 73,000 square feet, uh, 200 parking stalls, and kind of a, um, look like it may be set up for multi-use, flexible tenants, and they haven't had any activity. Marcus Partners um, is in the warehouse market. Um, one thing that the previous plan lacks is adequate dimensions for loading. When we have these loading bays here, these are only about 90 feet. Some of them are 80 and 70. The magic number for an efficient modern warehouse is 130 feet. So might be why people haven't jumped on this and scooped it up and started building it yet. Marcus Parkers has been looking at it. We've been doing a lot of work with them on some other communities. So we started to take a look at it in light of, we took we got full cooperation from Bracken Engineering who um, you know, did a great job at the time for a uh, flex building, but the market is really wants to go toward warehouse and we have our own ideas of how to make this place work. So working with the applicant or the potential applicant, we kind of came up with a building that flips it all around and kind of puts the building toward the wetlands and the parking in this side. You can see the property line we're kind of getting squeezed, so we can't really you can't get the building close enough over here because of the setbacks. Could you bring that a little bit closer because um, sure. I'm trying to use the camera on the... No problem. I should have sent you the PDFs too. There's one, one PDF set too. I should have just emailed it down. Is that the same size building as... It's actually slightly bigger slightly. because as we get it down here, we can get it a little further because the other one was up against the property line. It's slightly bigger. What we get is the 130 feet of load. So the green lines are what? The green lines are truck maneuvers to make sure that we could make it all work because this is going to be a, and this is a small inset that the extension of the property down here. I have another overlay. Is this going to be all shipping and receiving? That's the intent is to get a pure 100% warehouse, which again, that's why we have less parking as well. And we yeah. took a good look at the local bylaw. We've been doing some work in uh, West Bridgewater before, and we were well aware of the 50-foot no-touch zone and as we get closer to the wetlands. So as we looked at this, one of the things that would happen when we do the site like this is we're going to probably bring in a little bit more um, fill to get the building up higher. And it would be a little bit more. We'd probably incorporate some retaining walls. But we did an overlay of the Bracken plan and so the red line on the black and plan is their edge of pavement. This thicker green line is the limited disturbance. And the black line is where we're at. So we've kind of identified three areas that we need to go into the 50-foot no-touch zone that they were in there before, but we think we need to go closer to make it all work. So the green line is the 50-foot buffer? Nope, the green line is their limited disturbance. So where's the 50-foot buffer? It's right in most locations, right under the 50, right under the green line. Right under the green line. Yeah. So, so David, can you show that for yeah, the I can. So there's one little finger wetlands that wasn't there in 2006, but it, it kind of grew in 2017. And that's one spot where we need to get closer, but we'd be incorporating some walls and probably wouldn't get too much closer. And then uh, to get around the building properly, and our fire lane is going to be right next to the building. To get around the building properly, there's one spot on this side. And then at the entrance driveway, as you come off Manley Street, we really think that we need a 30 foot wide driveway and we need to make the trucking curb cut work. There's already a building here, we can't really move it up the hill. So we're gonna be a couple of feet closer in that area as well. 
So we also had a chance to take a look at the aerial photo, the order of conditions, and um, we gave a quick call to John to say, to see, you know, before we redesign the whole property, do all new stormwater calcs and take over the project for Bracken, they're not, they're kind of, kind of uh, maybe not interested in, um, in, in having another go at this site anymore. And we wanted to get a feel from the commission that with the proper mitigation that we could achieve the goals. The one reason that we're asking this is we read the new regulations relating to the 50 foot no touch and the tree policies is that this particular site doesn't have many trees. It has some scrub vegetation and it was an old gravel pit. Um, here's people maybe doing four wheeling, motor riding motorcycles, um, things like that. So, from an environmental point of view, it appears that you know, getting the uplands developed and providing some of the mitigation that was previously proposed and can also be enhanced by the, a new applicant, that maybe we can achieve um, some of the environmental goals of getting the place closed off to illicit activity. Um, get um, some increased tax base to the town and um, and get some of the restoration work done. There was a significant amount of restoration contemplated um, on the within the order of conditions of the approved plans which I, I have on <coughs> the Bracken exhibit. So for instance the wetlands come way up here. This is one of those uh, haul roads or a motorcycle track. So this is one thing that was going to get restored and they have some color coding on the plants, things like that. Other areas of in between that have been deforested or gone down, there's other planting mitigation. So the applicant is more than willing to, to do you know, any mitigation work and then are also interested in if the commission feels so that, that additional mitigation is warranted, that something might be able to be done. Um, a lot of the property that the applicant is looking at is all wetlands back in this area and they're open to conservation restrictions um, uh, or, or conservation easements that the town could have the benefit to use portions of the land if they if they needed it for anything and certainly dedicated permanently to conservation so you know the development's going to end here so more than half the land that they're going to buy is wetlands and um, adjacent to the um, town water. the town water well, and we thought that maybe it's a reason that we could get a little closer is if we can make it all work for everybody. So that's the purpose why we're here. We need to get a you know when I say a little bit, I'm talking you know 10 to 15 feet at the most um, closer closer to the. And some of it might Squeeze be able to pull back because we, you know, they have some some stormwater areas in here. I've taken a crack at some of it when we have the bigger parking lot in the back. And I took a look at the, the, the soils and everything and the test holes on the old plant. I can get almost all the stormwater behind the building, recharge, overflow in a couple of places. We might not need to come right to the 50 foot or right past the 50 foot with our stormwater base. We haven't got that far yet. Um, all those, you know, those are one of the things that you might allow in there. How much bigger is that building compared to the other one? I think it's about 15,000 square feet. Is that much more often? Is the parking space is still the same? No, there's much less. Okay. They That's had 200 it. parking stalls were going to come in with 111. Is that because you, made, you were able to get it out into the parking area of the building? Um, it's really dictated by the, 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 the tenants that are being sought don't need the parking. So they were able it's to a warehouse with large trucks bringing material in and out. You less know, people work Yeah, less warehouse. people are not contemplating office space or, or manufacturing space. We were able to take a good look at also the special special permits that were granted historically here, which go back to the building inspector for any time you get a, a new tenant, it would have to be an approved use. They've since modified some of those uses within the Watershed Overlay Protection District, but similar to that, um, I think we're anticipating dry goods, warehouse, sealed containers. That was my other question was with the water district right there, 
Yeah. What type of warehouse were you? Well, we're we're uh, we're all aware that we are in the watersh watershed overlay district. We're also uh, in the zone two, adjacent to the zone one, so we're well aware of those environmental concerns, and they're also flagged. And you know, as a zoning so table, I don't think there'll be refrigeration in there. I don't believe so. This is going to be on uh, a septic, so a lot of those tenants. We'll put it this way. What about refrigerant? No. On trailers? No. No? It, no. If you don't have, if you don't have cooler storage in here, you wouldn't have refrigeration. But you're going to need, somebody, it be you're gonna need, if it's going to be coolers inside, no. No, that's what I'm have. saying. This wouldn't be a cold storage. Well, you have might have reefers there, but they're not running. You know, someone picking a load up comes in. No, but. this is a lot of, it, like he said, dry goods, shipping goods. They'll, they'll come in one day unpacked and then back out the other day. And just like this building layout, you know, is just not functionally up to market today. And that's why we wouldn't build that. And that's why we're here asking to kind of push it out because we feel like this building wouldn't be leased. If somebody built it, it would sit for a long time. We feel really, really good about the layout that we've we've drawn here, and you know that's why we're here. So the trucks on the new building going to be basically coming in, backing in, and coming back out and around, not turning around and no, they'll, they'll make do one loop. So around. yeah, so I, oh, go ahead. the lower road that we anticipate is fire access only with all the fire codes you have to get into the building. I think from here to here, work with the fire department, we'd be interested in potentially, um, you know modifying that surface if we had to you know are the trucks going around the building or are they going they can, in they the can come out either way but we okay. set it up this is uh that might be a fire truck i'm not sure i mean i think ideally you'd want them to circulate the building mm -hmm. is the best kind of flow okay. for a space like that so you would come in here you know they back out and then go oh, back oh, out yeah. and then come back out and then you know your employees are coming in here and then just going directly back out yeah. just for the flow just so, just so there's no like accidents that could happen spillage of gas or fuel and oil if they kind of like they're not going around the building like in one way yeah they're just kind of like you don't need any of that so you're saying they were just yeah, coming yeah, so they're coming in, in, and, in and out in and out. back in and then out around yeah, so they're so not they crossing paths it's yeah. typical there's yeah. no congestion of you, have, you know, drainage for all of that, I'm sure, tanks or whatever. So, we, so we, if, yeah, if we, they were to propose something, um, yeah. we, we would want, as a matter of yeah. fact, uh, there was just a recent article, uh, not article, email from the water department superintendent who is concerned because um, this whole side of town with all mm -hmm. the trucking and, and warehousing that's uh, going on, or just trucks parked waiting to be yep. mm -hmm. unloaded or whatever. Uh, he's he's asking that all the surfaces be hardtop contained within a, a stormwater treatment system yep. so that if there was a spill, at least it would be contained. And so that's what we would require ultimately on this project if the commission was interested in the uh, waiver. <coughs> right. And if I can just kind of give some background, this thing's been around uh, almost as long as I've been working here. Yeah. And it got renewed because nobody's buying this, and all the time, those four wheelers are out there uh, yeah. right next to our town well. So the original uh, applicant had uh, offered to mitigate, and then having them there would stop the activity. Mm -hmm. Well, since nobody's buying it, they're not building it, and the activity goes on. Right. Uh, so we asked them to to mitigate areas that. Um, we're outside the 100-foot jurisdiction even just to kind of help the environment. Right. A lot of it would grow back on its own, but um, they were willing to do some mitigation. And that's why originally you, you granted uh, yeah. a waiver on the, on the other project. Well, once, that, once they stop using like four wheels, dirt bikes, call it, it's going to start growing back, no problem. Yeah. So. So that is the purpose of the of the informal meeting is really to get s s you know straw votes so to speak of, of if the commission would entertain a new proposal uh, perfectly well telling that we we feel in order to make the numbers work we have to bring in some more there's more development costs here because of the bigger building bigger foundations taller foundation walls so there's a premium to coming up as well could there be a possibility of maybe shrinking the building a little bit. Well, that's where the that's where the balance lies, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's 
that's where we're at. There's another plan that we have that puts the building back up this way. Well, not even gets just us like our load and gets a like smaller like building, but it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you know the, the square footage doesn't economics. work to support the, cup, the economics. Okay. You know, so that that's, was that's we, the reason for that size. Then. Well, that's the. Re it's also the reason for flipping it. Yes. And not having it against this property line because we've got this. And how far apart did you say that the was it loading ducks are supposed to be apart? 14 feet total is kind of the dimensions apart. And for this, I mean, back here you'll you'll probably have you know mostly loading in here, but you'd also have a loading bay and then probably a, a trailer storage loading bay. So uh, it really depends on the tenant. Yeah. And we would build this you know speculatively so we wouldn't have a tenant when we started. Um, is that 14 feet? Door or 14 feet from middle of the door to middle of the door and the middle other door. Middle of the door, middle of the door. door. Well, it certainly would have improved that area finally. Yeah, I'd say we're very excited about this and the location and, and working with the town. Um, you know, I just as I said before, the existing layout doesn't yeah doesn't work, and you know we wouldn't move ahead with that. Um, if that's and do you need all 112 parking spaces? We don't quite know yet. Um, okay. No, yeah, I mean, we, we don't. We would uh, usually we do kind of one per a thousand. So here it would be closer to you know eighty, eighty five, ninety. So we're we're fine coming back on some of that. You know, if if it if opens up some green space and yeah, yeah. we've yeah. we've seen a, a number of sites that have been developed in town where there's way more parking spaces than they'll ever use, and they don't even need it for snow storage because they've got so many extra parking spaces right. so we're happy we're happy to look at that and pull back on some of the parking we we agree in a warehouse like this you you might have you know 25 to 30 people working at the max um, yeah. it's usually the local code dictates how many parking spots exactly. you need and we ask for a waiver typically to have less and say we can put them in here but we'd rather not pave it if you guys don't want it so right. We're happy to look at that and try to pull back on some of the parking, assuming we can, you know. And we we probably need a little relief really from the planning board on that too. I don't know if they've changed the parking regulations here, but that would they that's the push. But if you're asking right. for the waiver, we greatly appreciate it and encourage yeah. them to approve it. So yeah, and that's that's <laughs> it. And we we're happy to look at that and try to pull back on some of the paved area. It's better, off, that it's better off to ask to have a little bit too much and come right. back. So you know. As by the yeah. way, can we have to add another ten spots? We're like, well, what now? What's going on? Yeah, and so we can show that we can get it, and then yeah. just say, hey, we'll yeah. we'll not pave this area and keep it as green space. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, as things move forward, like an architect hasn't been brought That's on board. Right. I don't yeah. think it's hit. You know, this plan hasn't hit the market yet um, because what's approved is a different plan. Um, but you know, if we if we if we proceed, which it sounds like the commission may entertain, yeah, I think from may enter at this stage, it looks. Right. Personally, it looks fine to me. But the the next step for that for these guys is to keep move forward with the purchase and sales agreement. Yeah. I don't know. Right. You know, I don't have all those yeah. details. But there's something you know. There's sure. they're engaged right now. Mm -hmm. um, something with the purchase and sales, and then re-engineering the whole property, getting an architect, maybe doing a little geotech. Did they have geotech done? They had a couple. They done a few. Just, just a few lot to do. But no, a lot to do. Some more. We'll go through a full civil design, yeah, right. engineering, everything. I think. We're just here because we're about to go down that before we make a large investment yeah. Yeah. on design and the PNS. We like to get some comfort that we're all right going into these buffers. I'd like to yeah. see something in there. Yeah, help keep right. the uh, right wetlands a little bit more protected too. Right, and yeah. looking at the aerial photo and looking even looking at the old plan where the mitigations the, where the up. mitigations were. I, I don't think we need to, you know, remove large trees in the fifty foot. And it's probably um, hard for the uh, audience at. Yeah, uh, on the zoom, but there's these red lines on the plan. I don't know if you can see them, and there they are. This here's the town well property right here, and they're going to own this, all this land here, plus this and this. They're not buying this up here, and that's all wetland. I don't know uh, why it's not. Included, uh, if the owner of the land thinks they're going to develop it, they're probably crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're not purchasing that. No, that's correct. That would, would be a separate you, lot. Would you be uh, able to convince the owner of this property to provide an access easement to the back in here and the town get some type of recreational, passive recreational use out of it? 
So I, I don't want to speak for the, the seller of the property, but we, we would be willing to, on what we own, give, give the town an easement, you know, through their well area to access all of this property that's not part of the development. We would even, you know, if there was, we could also grant some of the land if the town was open to that. So there's a potential there uh, to ante up the mitigation so that right. there's exactly. justification for this? Yeah. It's It'll somebody be a else to the well area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're open to that. I mean, honestly, there's not a ton of value to us here. And if there's more value to the town, I mean, we're willing to work with the no town. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't know what the anticipation is of that lot, but the A&R plan that they did to put to put the land on the market with the building, it shows it as an un unbuildable lot. Yeah, would no. it be landlocked then, too? No, this has frontage. He's got frontage, but the he's river, got that. He's, he's got riverfront, flood plain, all wetlands. Yeah, and then we have, they, the, yeah. the previous owner also still owns this office building, and then as you saw in the previous plan, there's a parking and access yeah. easement that we'll, we'll share with them through here. Right. Then we'll be purchasing this property up until this is what they're calling lot three, which is not part of our purchase itself today. So it's, it's similar to the last plan, but we, we feel that in order to make it work for the market, we've got to flip it around 180 degrees orientation, which at least keeps the trucks away from the wetlands. Sure. The majority of the snow pushing is away from the wetlands. Yep. And um, we feel that in order to make the numbers work for the square footage, we've identified three areas that we feel that we're going to have to be a little bit closer. So we figure we would come in and yeah. tell you now Makes rather sense. than <laughs> spend all the time, effort, and money on re-engineering it to um, Here to go backwards. There's a problem. Right. Yeah. Right. So we appreciate the commission taking the time on their agenda to hear us. And we always appreciate uh, Mr. Delano picking up the phone and you know organizing these things. Taking some time to any uh, to commissioners at home have any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All right. I think if you get creative and come back with something, we <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, we're not telling you not to. <laughs> so we know that L L LEC was um, on board with the wetlands before. We may we may go back to them. We do a lot of work with EcoTech, who is our primary consultant through Kelly Engineering. I don't know if you guys have been working with anybody else. We've been doing some sites with them that we've used EcoTech with. Um, we'll have to decide what we want to do. It is an active line, I believe, still. Um, and what we, our involvement would be more than the line, it would be helping us put the, the mitigation package together yeah. for the new plan. It, would we modify the existing NOI or should we be filing? Well, I think we, what we would do in our application is we would request that the old order receive a certificate of compliance yep. for the previous yep. landowner in the deed for no work done, and we would get a new order with a new number. Right. Yeah. You could do the amended, but you're kind of changing the whole project. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, we just do it new. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, change, almost, yeah. it's almost <laughs> easier to do yeah. new because then yeah. your list of documents is all fresh. Mm -hmm. yeah. if there, you know, there's a new engineer, yeah. potentially a new wetland scientist on board, and um, a new yeah. property owner. Yep. So Oh, I'm sure we'll see you again. Okay. Thank you well, very listen, much. Thank you very much for your time. Sounds thank good. You. You're welcome. And um, next time I'll send the PDFs as well. Okay. And welcome back to, to <laughs> public hearings. Uh -huh. Yeah. In person. Thank you very much. I like the Zoom ones, though, to be honest with you. I thought they were pretty productive. Well, well you can There's do benefits it. for both, and if I'm I, hoping this hybrid model that we can continue It might be able to work. If I had sent the PDFs, it would have worked better. Mm -hmm. because yeah. I, I like Zoom I better than Google. <laughs> I, I thought you might all have monitors and not that. I, I, I guess I should have asked. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. 42, Hartsville, tree cutting, approval with mitigation. Great. I'll uh, just show you. Oh, I, actually, I, I have a form uh, that I can put up on online. But I went out, and the uh, area is um, covered with potentially hazardous trees. Uh, it's just amazing. They've already had two um, damages, property damage claims that they've had to make because of trees falling over onto the house. Yeah, and. and um, so I did go out and um, discussed with the 
owner that there are certain trees that they should be allowed to cut down uh, to pr protect their property. And it turns out that there's um, I want to make sure I'm right here. Uh, 15 replacement trees will be necessary, and that's at the ratio of 3 to 1. So my math tells me that there were five trees, and um, the owner would like to replant sugar maples for that area so that they could tap them oh, for the sugar in the sure. future. So I'm recommending, I went out and inspected, I'm recommending approval, but it's the commission's decision. Are the ones coming down, are they pines? They're pines. Yeah. yeah. And they're in terrible condition. Yeah. yeah. They've been there a long time. I'll entertain a motion to approve the tree cutting uh, request. I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> And we have a couple more items. Conservation Commission participation in the bicentennial activities. So um, we've been asked by the chairperson of the Bicentennial Celebration Committee um, to uh, participate in the bicentennial activities. And uh, the Open Space Committee is doing a um, town cleanup sometime, I believe, in April. I can get you the exact date. And they're also doing a uh, river walk on the first Sunday in June. And um, the commission could partner up with them or um, uh, take some money from some of our accounts and do up some t shirts so they could be handed out to people and, uh, you know, have the Conservation Commission and the uh, bicentennial logo on it. Um, he was just asking that there'd be some cooperation. So immediately I put the logo on the on the emails and on the uh, agenda so that you know we're participating. Uh, but it's it's really up to the commission. Um, I I know the open space committee is very active in these types of things where this commission is more uh, regulatory and doing the permitting and and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So. We don't necessarily have to go out and help the Open Space Committee or any, maybe the Ag Committee co Commission is doing something. The Commission could. They committed to the Riverwalk event. Yeah. They so just to clean it up, you mean? <laughs> the Riverwalk is to. They have, um, well, the last time there was booths and different. Oh, I see. People yeah, that's a nice. Exhibiting and stuff. And nice, so yeah. the Ag Commission is going to be. Having yeah. handouts and giveaways and something. They to close down River Street and everybody yeah. walks yeah. from the park, and it's the same day as the public safety That's and nice. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is to um, not just help at a booth or something, but to promote the bicentennial uh, logo or the just the sense of the celebration. So if the commission wants to spend some money, we could get some uh, handout stuff that we could give to the Open Space Committee or to the Ag Commission and uh, just have the Commission's name on it, celebrating. The Commission celebrates the two of them. Coffee I mean, cups. Get some stickers. Yeah, coffee cups, stickers. Yeah. What, what, you know, I mean, if, the, if that's what you'd like, I'll come up with some ideas I for the next one. meeting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. So we'll spend some money. I think we should hand out those Norway maples that everybody likes. <laughs> <laughs> the it's, a, it's an invasive <laughs> plant in Massachusetts. Oh, please, uh, uh. <laughs> Go plant but you can, you can give, I mean, a plant giveaway. You could do spruce trees or yeah. something like that that time of year if you wanted to. Sure. But I'm oh. open to it, yeah. Oh, you know, the um, Worcester Count, see, I don't know if they still have the uh, dis conservation districts like they used to have for Plymouth County, Bristol County, and they used to have a plant sale where you could buy 25 small spruce uh, seedlings, or I don't know what you call yeah, them. They'd be like, yeah, seedlings, and they'd be like two bucks a piece or something. Yeah. And they were well, in this town, I think people would plant them. We want one in front of the house, so yeah. I mean, 
Now, I don't think those illegal. those districts around here are operating, but I have been communicating with the Worcester district, and they have sales. Mm. And maybe we could buy some and then turn yeah. around and give them away. Yeah. Um, I'll look into that as well, but I, I have been ch um, for the last year on their list, and they they send out all kinds of uh, notices of different plants yeah. that they're selling bulbs. So we would have a little booth that we're all sharing and give we're partner with like the open that. space if mm. they if Share we can. I mean, if we if we're available and want to do it, then I think yeah, the commission would do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but even if you don't man the booth, if you give them the right. swag mm. yeah. to uh, yeah. hand out, yeah. then go. we're participating. There you go. So I I'll come up with some ideas yeah. for the next. My day. suggestion was something that was more evergreen because that time of year, be able to get them and probably transplant. If you're yeah. looking at deciduous trees or shade trees or sugar maples or something, by then they've already leafed out and it's yeah. tough to well, plant something that's little and bare root. Where yep. the evergreens, you can kind of have a little idea. longer shelf life. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll have some ideas for the next meeting. In invoices. Uh, none, but we have to deal with that um, order conditions for ah, 21. That's right. Back to the yep. 21 Lincoln Street. Oh, yeah. The huge five page document that we. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. I, I took a quick read and it looks. I know I sent it out real late this afternoon. It took me most of the day to write it. Um, it was pretty. I was thorough. actually going to ask. Is there anything, anything different? I didn't in see it anything come through. <laughs> this is like and I mean, the last week of in between. I'm like, I don't know if I didn't get it or what. Or then I just see a tie, and I'm like, wait a minute. Because yeah, I did they mention they John, and I didn't fully pick it up when I quickly read it. But having that stormwater engineer hired to supervise on site, like we did with the high yeah, school and some yeah. of the others, yeah. is is in it as a recommendation, which I think with that much fill coming in. Do you see anything that they might object to? In uh, there? No, I don't, and I'm gonna. Actu I'm actually gonna call it up so that um, that we can just kind of go through some of the highlights. Can you guys hear me from home? Yeah. Okay, good. We never know when the microphone's going out. All right, so the first uh, <coughs> page is pretty much similar to all others. Um, they have to get their erosion control barriers in. That's number eight. And, um, and they have to have it certified by the engineers and, and send it back to us that it's in the right place and installed properly. Uh, the next page requires certain things uh, for proof of uh, recording of the order conditions as built requirements to get their certificate and then um, required coming into the office and signing an affidavit that they have read the order of conditions they understand it and that they've had an opportunity to uh, ask the agent any questions and once they've done that we can always refer back to the fact that you signed this affidavit don't tell me you didn't understand it um, Number 15 requires that uh, during the construction phase of the project, they have to designate an erosion control supervisor who will be responsible for uh, making sure that the construction phase pollution prevention and erosion sedimentation plan uh, is complied with during the construction. And they have to send in reports and um, and then they also have to, because it's, we don't know what contractors involved with it, they have to actually write up a new plan uh, that the, the commission will approve before they can start their work. They have to have a meeting between the supervisor of the construction, the erosion control specialist, and me uh, to go over any questions that they have on the site so that if uh, conditions that are developing uh, out there in the field are different than what the engineer who designed this whole thing and she did a great job but she can't anticipate everything so this is the opportunity to make the 
um, last minute corrections. The other uh, item that's important here is that the um, the size of the development, huge warehouse, all kinds of parking and all the drainage systems, uh, they can't just go out and start building and letting the water flow and say, well, it, at the end of the project, we'll put in the drainage. They've got to be building the drainage as they go. The engineer has to make sure that it's uh, operating properly. So we're asking for interim as-built as they go. Is that kind of like what they did up on Scotland Street? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, before we issue a, a certificate of compliance for the project, they have to appoint in, and um, hire a stormwater management operation and maintenance supervisor. And that will run with the property from now on. Uh, if the person moves on to another company, uh, they have to replace that supervisor with someone else and they have to inform us uh, that they are doing so. The, they have to file a uh, national pollution uh, detection elimination system permit called an EPTES permit. Uh, so they have to file a notice of intent for that and get uh, EPA approval because it's uh, such a big piece of land. Anything over an acre, they have to they have to file with the EPA. Uh, there's an invasive control uh, management plan that's required, and a supervisor of that, and that will also be someone that uh, is going to be hired by the developer and will run with the land. So every year they'll have to go out and, and do a, a report. And uh, if the person moves on to another business or passes away, moves out of state, they've got to replace them with another person and we have to know about it. The, as it says there, the applicant, his heirs and assigns will also be responsible for ma maintaining the employee of the uh, stormwater management operation and maintenance supervisor. Uh, within two weeks of the start of the construction, the wetland scientist has to uh, be involved with developing a plan, planting and overseeing the construction of both the uh, wetland uh, replication and the buffer zone enhancement that we approved at the last meeting. There's uh, requirements for the commission and the engineer for the developer to do inspections as they go so we can see anything that's not working out well. Um, the uh, invasive plant man maintenance supervisor and the stormwater maintenance and uh, operation and maintenance supervisors uh, have to be um, budgeted into the uh, cost of managing and, and uh, keeping the property. Property managers have to include that in their budget. And they're going to require, we're going to require a $15,000 cash bond to make sure they ask for their certificate of compliance. And um, that is general stormwater management permit has been issued and that the uh, conditions of that are part of these conditions. So if you think that's pretty good, I'll uh, tweak it a little bit more tomorrow and we'll issue it out on Thursday. I can't imagine adding anything to it. No, it, it looks good to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, like, I like how they I put in there hiring stormwater and uh, all these people that if they Super leave vision, they yeah. uh, inform us who and so I like that. Good. Um, I just uh, I went over it so quickly I can't remember if I skipped it but um, we always have a requirement I think it's in here uh, that requires a stormwater management agreement to be recorded at the registry and that's what the stormwater management uh, manager operation and maintenance supervisor uh, follows is that drainage agreement. So I'm pretty sure it's in there, but uh, I just want to make sure tomorrow when I look at it again. 
We ever had an instance, not that it'll happen with these people, they're pretty big, but where <coughs> we've had a project where the uh, owner uh, goes bankrupt and there's no money or anything to manage the abandoned property. Who, who has to end up doing that? Pain, doesn't it? Yes, so usually there's a lot of money um, involved and I think uh, during some uh, title search on, on the owner of this property because um, the owner of the property is, it's on the top here. Um, well, these people West, are, West yeah. Bridgewater Owner LLC is what the, the entity is. I happen to notice uh, uh, some financing yes. and it's uh, quite, <laughs> quite a complex. Quite a f f few millions of dollars oh, yeah. uh, um, that I was just shocked, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, so let's say they go bankrupt. The people that granted that mortgage uh, are going to have to then pick up the pieces. How we're protected is that with this progressive uh, oversight and as builds that are being required to make sure they're following mm -hmm. the plan mm -hmm. and not waiting to the end and we've got a mess is that there should be the erosion control uh, items in place so that it could sit fallow for two or three years and not be impacted by um, gotcha. yeah. by the fact that nobody's doing anything right right was there a question yeah, John, I, I went through the document and there's nowhere in the document where it says that stormwater management has to be filed. Okay, I'll make sure it gets in there. My only other question was, um, what are markers? Are they in there or required? Did we put those? Um, I hadn't anticipated that they would be uh, not that there's much on the site that they're going to be near, but did we? I guess why not? I mean, l let's say there's um, a property manager hires a landscaping company and they That's decide. That's where I was after s having some of the sites in they town. We didn't have a, or they decide to clean a little brush and the brush yeah, is yeah, further the in. grass gets thrown in. Well, not a lot of grass. Yeah, so that's a good idea. We'll add that. Just makes them stop and think. They might not do anything with it, but just continue to yeah. dump grass and debris. But so there should be something in there about uh, no dumping snow in the stormwater basins. Uh, again, if it's not there, I'll catch it tomorrow. But uh, we usually have signs along the stormwater basin uh, to not put your. Do you find snow people snow. pretty much follow that? Well, I think my did. They, they've yeah. been good. Yeah. I mean, we don't can't police everyone, but. No, market bath, you go buy them, they've, they've been good. Yeah, good. They've actually even cleaned up all the bags of debris yeah. that blow over into it. They don't they, well, they dump anything big, over, they just push it into the Big company they can't them. afford yeah, to. I, for the first couple of years, I was out there after every snowstorm and yeah. couldn't see it. And every yeah. once in a while, I look over and go, <laughs> hey, still, still doing it. Otherwise, I think... So, the stormwater agreement, I'll add uh, the signs uh, for snow if it's not in there from my memory and then also um, conservation markers and d down at the 40b um, they have uh, conservation markers that were dictated by the um, MEPA program so they're just not our little medallions they're actually good size signs and we could ask for the same thing here is that something new or uh, no I think they usually do that for protected uh, habitats like that because they're, they're the ones that permit it. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the special conditions as amended. I'll make that motion. Second it. Moved and second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. I'll, I'll um, <laughs> provide everybody with a final copy. But. And does anybody have anything else? Because I do have one quick thing, and I was hoping that Carol Ashton was going to come on because she brought it to my attention. But um, there's Max sent out in their latest e legislative blast. I don't know if everybody got it or if they read it. That the state house is looking to 
move forward with an act preserving open space in the Commonwealth. And it's actually expanding the Public Lands Preservation Act. And the intent is to increase area due to climate change and the changes happening to the environment. And trying to have towns, cities, municipalities increase area for ensuring clean air, supporting agriculture, forestry, recreation, stormwater, buffers, flooding, um, anything from intense climate change effects. And it's to create regulations to reduce the net loss and require developers to preserve more space and give funding. So give funding out. There's a, a bill that's been sponsored and I don't know whether we, and you can, but through the MAC link, you can sign a letter and send it off to your state reps, senators, and to the heads of the, um, the Senate and the President. So they would provide funding for... They would be funding, and they're looking at changing some of the laws to increase the state requirements for buffer zones yeah. and protection areas. And that sort of flies in the face of a question you brought up at our gathering. We we're supposed to have more affordable housing. And oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I think this is that people are seeing that we can't just keep building on everything oh. without having those buffer zones increased yes. and having more so space. So would they change kind of like the 100-year like the flood zone thing, too, and all that to a 150-year flood? So the I mean, would it up it to that? So HUD hasn't gone through and re redone them, but they found that the 100-year storms are more frequent yeah. than yeah. what they had. Yeah. Predicted, yeah. and so they're going to be relooking at that. So that's part of the the um, vulnerability yep. uh, planning that the towns, the state is funding to have the towns do. Because I know some of the developments have come in. They said that the old was it fifty year fifty year flood. They can go by that, and we can't do anything really about it. We can say, well, well we'd like to see the hundred up year. until the hundred yeah. hundred year, and they like well. Okay, we'll do that, but if they don't want to do it, they don't have to, and hopefully this will change that a little bit, too. Yeah, it puts a little bit more teeth in yep. yeah, those regulations. So, anybody that wants to sign a letter, I'd encourage it. I don't know if yeah. we want to send one as a commission or not. I know that well, Framingham did. If you decide that you want to do that, I can put it together and send we'll it. Sign it, it or send it, you sign it. And I mean, and Matt's pretty good about having the, <laughs> the cookie-cutter version that you can yeah, but I, I would like mm. to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah. I will entertain a motion that we send letters of support to the. They recommended the House, um, the Senate President, and the Senate Chair of Ways and Means. So those are the two that'll kill it if they're going to kill it. If not, they'll move it forward. So. so I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you, John. Okay. All right. That's all I had. Anything? Anybody else? No. Nope. Uh, Tim, I just, I just want to let everybody know at this point, I'm not really comfortable with the Manly and intrusion into the buffer. Um, I think we should have a phone that everybody, you know, that I was on board right now. I'm not. So, putting that out there. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it, when yeah. the last plan came through, they offered a lot of mitigation for the 50 foot. That plan, they stayed out of the wetland line, but they did go into the 50. That's why I kind of asked them if they could squeeze up the building a little bit, but right, they, so are, they are given less parking, right. which is kind of good on that behalf. So, but again, yeah. staying out of the 50 is what... Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. It'll weigh the co the benefits. Yeah, definitely. Of the yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We weren't just saying go ahead into the fifty. Oh, it no. was, you could engineer something and offer us something, <coughs> but yeah. I didn't want to get into whatever, but I just wanted to get out Yeah. So they, Paula, just to to um, okay. make you feel a little better, is that I told them they could come in and try to get a feel for what the commission was going to um, react. And I told them, even if they seem to not say too much, it's not a vote, so you can't yep. bank on it. So they're going to have to make a decision on what they saw. 
So I think they just want to get. And the if the commission puts them through the ringer at the end, money down on bond is that's their that's, yeah, that's exactly. their. Uh, I mean, I think it needs to be developed. That was their I think choice. It yeah. And I hope the wetlands, yeah. I don't know how appropriate it was to say that up front and, you know, meet someone in a different direction. Yep. Yeah. Get some more detail. Yeah. No, they haven't had, they don't have an official no. plans in front of us yet, so. Right. <laughs> so they, they knew that there was noth nothing guaranteed, even if yeah. they seemed like there was agreeable here tonight. And so they, yeah. they understood that. All right. Anything else? Nope. Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much for attending remotely. Okay. Yep. All right. Good night, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah. By the way, just before I let you go, how was that looking at the plan through my camera? What do you mean for the for the for the uh, Lincoln Street? For that, for that, um, uh, when, Man when I had West Center Street, the old for the Manly Street thing, Manly when I had to have it. Yeah, no, that was fine. It was fine. Huh. The only, the only issue that was difficult was the Lincoln Street Bridge. Yeah. Uh, the